Even me not videoing you, I knew that. Okay, fuck. Wait, Give me fuck a... you? I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. Number one, if I do, it ties me to you. Mm. And you to me. What happened to me? It was Terry. When exactly. she invited me up yeah, yeah, and I felt yeah. like I had to. Then that I pressure. felt like, yeah, I need to. there's anything that I really love and enjoy watching um, during any season of Big Brother, it could be Big Brother Niger or even this Big Brother in Zamzi, it's how the remaining few housemates begin to come together and unpack all their strategies, all the games they've been playing from the beginning of the show. Guys, I always find it very, very interesting and fascinating because in the course of these housemates, sharing their stories, sharing their experiences, sharing how they viewed events happening in the house, how they interpreted those events, and also give explanations as to why they reacted the way they did when such events happened. You find out that some people become an open book. Yeah, they are very, very open because in their heads, hey, the show has ended anyways, so um, what does it hurt to let people see you for who you truly are? But then on the flip side, some of these housemates they even lie <laughs> they lie they try to buy face because they know that they've really done a lot of disgusting a lot of um should i say malicious things just to get to the finals just to get to where they are and they are ashamed of those things that they've done especially when or if those people they've done those things to or said such malicious things about behind their back is still in that house with them I know what I'm saying might sound big to a lot of you, but I'm actually referring to um, the likes of Mpo, Terry, Tools, Sister Mara, Libo, having conversations about, oh, when, when, when I first met you in week one, oh, I thought this about you, this is what I saw, this is what I did. Guys, in the midst of all these things, I'm sorry to say, but Terry was blatantly lying. She was lying so much that at some point I'm like, girl, the show has ended just just say the truth just say it the way it is so that people can clear the air right now that you are inside the house not when you now go outside and then people start seeing video clips of all the nasty things you said about them and then you now start trying to explain yourself you know what guys a lot was said and aside that terry also gave us a more deeper insight into a world of adult content creation guys it was quite insightful to be very honest somehow yes i learned a lot yes because i for one used to think that only fans was just about you know pornography and blah 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 but terry really put in a lot of effort into explaining and i'll tell you how that conversation came about as well on this particular episode of frankly speaking with glory elijah before i continue let me first of all welcome all of you back you welcome back to my youtube channel my name is glory elijah this is frankly speaking with glory elijah yes i am the girl with the tea and the tea of this video is quite insightful very very deep all right um also before we continue do not forget that today is a d-day right today is saturday you know what happens on this channel um we always always have our fswg saturday youtube live stream on this channel every saturday okay i already said every saturday time is 3 p.m w-a-t or 4 p.m c-a-t so as i will always say whichever part of the world you are based please make it a date with us do not forget to use google world clock to check that your time and our time aligns all right um don't worry when you come through you know why i'm inviting you so let's just get into the video so this week has pretty much been a week of revelations yes um guys it's been a whole lot to actually take in however in the midst of all of this um it was terry's should i say confessions or lying confessions <laughs> to Mpo Wabadimo whilst we were having conversations with um, Tools. Who else was there? I can't really remember. But they were having a conversation anyways about first impressions. So they were actually talking about when Mpo had moved from downstairs to upstairs, I think in week one. Terry had talked about how she was really excited that Mpo had moved upstairs. She kept on telling herself, thank God, thank God. Emphasis on thank God that Mpo was finally there. It would give her more opportunity to get to know Mpo. They would have more opportunity to talk, 
because according to her she felt like when they were in a group setting they they gelled you know they 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 echoed each other when they're having conversations and Paul was kind of really open-minded you know but then on one-on-one -on -one, they never really did have that chance to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation because the house was still full and so guys I, I was wondering, like, okay, Terry, if you said that you were thanking God that Mpo had actually moved upstairs, I don't get it because I did not really see a lot of that reaction. Because if you all cast your mind, Mpo was pretty much in a space with Libo at that time, yes. And Terry was pretty much engrossed with Sister Mara. And then fast forward to the second week, Vino had gotten into the house and Terry had been swallowed up in a thing with Vino. Mpo was still going back and forth with her uncertain relationship with Libo. So both of these people, they had their own thing going for them. Yes. And guys, let's be very, very frank about it. There, it wasn't like there was a connection between Terry and Mpo at all. It wasn't like Terry was actually making a move, like seriously working hard towards ensuring that she and Mpo, they struck up that friendship, that relationship, guys. I really did not see a lot of that. So when Terry was giving her own side of the story yesterday that, oh, she was actually thanking God that um, Mpo had moved upstairs, I was wondering like, okay, when exactly? Terry, when? Because guys, if I recall, though, if this is the same show that I watched, ha, if I recall, much later, week three, week four, week five, it became a series of gossips about Mpo and it, it was mutual. I mean, whilst Terry would be busy talking about um, Mpo and Ntabi to Tools and maybe Sister Mara, who else was there? Uh, I can't really remember now. I think Venus was there, yes. While they would be talking, Mpo would be busy doing our own series of conversations as well with Libo and Ntabi and then sometimes when Libo is on the other side on the other group's side she was to be talking with Ntabi so it was like a cold war between the Terry and Tools camp as against the Mpo and Ntabi's camp and then sometimes they would all come together and have conversation and I think it was when um, Mpo now moved a bed to Libo's side so they now all started having a collective conversation together, a collective conversation that when Mpo had the opportunity to be the center of the conversation, she would not carry it all and be giving malicious gossips about all the people that they are talking about. There was a day they talked about Yoli, be you guys. It was really crazy. It was wild the way they gossiped about these people. And then after having conversations with them upstairs, Mpo later, she and Ntabi, they will now engage in their own kind of malicious gossip. Guys, Listen, I know it was all the game, but everybody was doing their thing. Everybody was playing their game the way they knew how best to play their game. So yesterday, when they were all talking about first impressions, oh, when I first met you, oh, I would have wanted to be your friend. Like, they were making it all sound flowery, like rose, rosy. They made it sound like, oh, all, all our intentions towards one another, all our thoughts was actually very, very pure, very, very rosy. And I'm like, look at all these people. I mean, we're all seeing what was going on. And then fast forward to much later in the night, um, Mpo was having conversations with Tools. Tools was very, very frank with Mpo. That listen, even till now, I still find myself guarded around you. And then he gave his reasons for that. And then Mpo also went ahead to explain her own part of the gist as well. And the way she was sounding, she was trying to sound like, oh, Tools, I'm really happy for you. Like, I'm sorry to say, guys, I really, really like Mpo. I love her game. She's been a strong contender in the game. But it seems as though, while she was having all of those uh, malicious gossips with Ntabi about the house, especially about Tools, there was a statement she used to make about Tools. That, oh, Tools used to act as if he's the one that is leading this house. That he doesn't know that he's nothing. Like, they used to say a lot of that. And then they would go ahead to make mockery of tools, say a lot of nasty things about him. That last night when they were now talking, she was not making it sound like she wasn't really bothered, you know, that she was just guarding her own self. <laughs> like, wow. Oh, wow. And it wasn't like tools was also innocent as well. You know, he was making it sound like he was just, you know, guarding himself against her as well. I'm like, you know what? Anyways, it is expected that these housemates are gonna try to buy face with one another because hey. The show is about to end, so they're trying to start off on the fresh slate, you know, so that they'll be friends when they go out of the house. But then what they are not putting into consideration is that there are footages, there are clips of most of the nasty things that they have said about one another. 
So why don't they just go ahead and clear the air now? I mean, voting has ended, guys. Has ended. So just go ahead, talk. And when you go outside, you will not be surprised anymore about the things you're going to see. Now, I really love the fact that for the sake of clarity and enlightenment, Tools and Mpo Wabadimo, they had actually put up a mock radio show to interview Terry. Yes, because the truth is, there's this stereotype about people that have OnlyFans accounts. The first thing that comes to people's mind is they are porn stars. They create sexual content. So, Tools, of course, had the same perception. I think Mpo also did. So they wanted to understand really what it was that Terry was doing. And Terry was very, very open about it. That, of course, what she does, the kind of content she creates is pleasurizing herself sexually and also making money out of it. For her, cashing out big was what she was big on. For her, it's just a job. It's just work. And then she even revealed that before coming into the house, before being selected to participate in this season of Big B in Zamzi, she had been considering, you know, going into a partnership with a US-based adult content creator, a guy. Because now, for her own content, she was the one having sex with herself. So she wanted to partner with that guy so that both of them could be doing it together. And then she was going to become a full-blown porn star on OnlyFans. So, what changed her mind was that she met her boyfriend, her ex. And they dated for, I think, six months. And then she got into Biggie's house. And then she met Vino. And now she's no longer thinking about doing that sort of partnership anymore. And then she went ahead to explain that only fans people can actually use it to create any kind of content but what the platform does is there's an option for if you want to be an adult content creator or not so you it, there are options to that you choose what you want so people actually do other stuff on there not just sexual content that guys in all of that conversation that was the only thing that i took away from that so i love what Mpo said that listen she was actually confused about what Terry used to do, but now she's now seeing a deeper level to this, that you could actually be using your platform to teach women how to pleasurize themselves, especially women who are deprived. Yes, I mean, that like, there's nothing wrong in that. And to be very honest, guys, I actually saw a lot of sense in that. I mean, this is a conversation that we can have on another day, ladies in the house, or guys as well. If you want us to have this conversation on any of our Saturday YouTube live stream, just go ahead and indicate in the comment section below. This is a very, very broad conversation. I would richly love to talk about it as well. But basically, that was what they talked about. I enjoyed all the conversations overall, but still, I wished that the housemates were more honest about their revelations. Yes, because at the end of the day, after the show, after school, they will still see clips of what they had each said about the other person and i wonder how that's going to go down listen this is where i'm going to end this particular episode of frankly speaking with glory elijah just go ahead let me know your thoughts about all of this in the comment section below we'll see you guys by 3 p.m wat today make it a date with us and i'll see you then bye